Rick.
in total admiration.
بشناسند Could we all stand and, and I read uh, Galatians 6, uh, starting at chapter 6 through 10.
today? Okay.
Please see Sister Patricia Edwards or Sister Mother Jane Tidwell if you sign up for the Cavalry Church Senior Adult Luncheon, which is on Thursday, May 26, 2022, from 12 to 1.30 p.m. There will be, what was that, 5801 Pineville Matthews Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28226. It is the last one for the summer. There will be a guest speaker. The deadline to sign up was Thursday, May 19th. There will also be an organ concert, which starts at 11, 11 o'clock to 11.30 a.m. in the sanctuary. Therefore, all the lunch and attendees can come up to the Crown Room on the third floor to check in for the luncheon. The lunch starts at 12 and will end at 1.30 p.m. Next luncheon is not until Thursday, September 29th. See sign up sheet and vestibule. High school and college graduates will be recognized Sunday, May 29th during the morning worship. All graduates please be here before 9.30 that Sunday to line up. Join us for vacation Bible study June 13th to June 17th, nightly 6.30 to 8 p.m. Class for all ages. For questions, please see Sister April Berry. We will celebrate Men's Day and Father's Day service during the morning worship June 17th. All men choir leaders for that Sunday, please see Deacon David Williams or Deaconess Melissa Adams for detail. There will be a community food truck event July 16, 2022 here at the church. If you are interested or know someone who would like to bring their food truck, please see the church secretary or April Berry for the application for more details. The fee for the truck is $75. There will be a short, brief meeting after the service for our deacons and trustees. So I'd like to leave you with this. First John 4, verse 7. Say, be love. Let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Good morning, Bert Good morning. Indeed, uh, thank you for uh, open by participating in the panel out there. We kept ourselves together even during the pandemic. Amen. 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 Now, this kind of music still presented to, to our congregation. We appreciate y'all. Okay. Along with our support, we give from our past. But uh, even during the pandemic, guess what? We got two new members. Oh, I guess. Please stand up to come forward along with Sister Mary Hamilton. All right. We thought it would be robbery. We didn't know. <laughs>
and just look at it afterwards. And so when I got back to my hotel room, I was just amazed. They just loved what was going on in the name of the Lord. So we thank God for Reverend Schuler and everyone uh, in bearing with us last week. Amen. Again, on today, uh, you heard all the announcements. And keep in mind, Vacation Bible School that will be going on June 13th to June 17th. May I sir, we have classes for all ages. Keep that in mind as we go into the month of June. Also next week, we're celebrating our graduates. Amen. Let's give a hand out to Amen. Our high school and college graduates on next week. Amen. I will make sure to let, uh, let God allow God to deal with me this week in regards to what that word is going to be. Amen. Because I want to make sure it's something motivational for all of our graduates. Everyone who has graduated high school, uh, college, whatever, uh, to be able to be motivated on uh, that day. Amen. Pastor will have his regular and all. And I always do that during our graduation Sunday uh, because it's fitting. Uh, from that perspective. So, they have a sermon come celebrate with us during our morning worship during that hour. Also, uh, the announcements with regards to our community food truck event, we're entering closer to it in July. Amen. If you have individuals who have food trucks and would like to participate, please see Sister April Berry or contact the church office. We'll get you the information. Amen. It's the first time we've done this. Amen. We believe that it will truly be a great event. Amen. We just need the support in the congregation. If you know someone, I would throw past, I think me and the white drove past um, uh, Ralph Bennett's Fort Road, Trade Street. Um, we drove by, we saw all these food trucks. They made that area down there by, I guess, the Family Dollar, the Dollar Tree. Uh, they made that whole area now um, kind of a, a swap meet almost. Uh, where there's food, there, there's music, and there's food, there's food trucks all over the place. And also people are exchanging, uh, you know, gifts and services and so forth, merchandising and doing all that stuff. And I said, you know what? I said, I'm looking at this event and I can see that here at First Mount Zion for our food truck event to a large degree, but even, even though it's only food. So please, ma'am, please, sir, be mindful of that from that perspective. All the other announcements have been read again. Today is the pastor's anniversary, amen. Six years, amen, of being a pastor here at First Mount Zion. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Amen. For being able to serve this congregation, amen. Uh, these last two years, I've been praying hard. <laughs> amen. Uh, praying hard because the pandemic, uh, just a lot of uncertainty. But one of the things I've learned is when you have uncertainty, you need to go to God who is certain about all things. Amen. Amen. So even in the two last two years, we have managed, amen, we have done the things that we think God deemed were necessary that we need to do, and we're here, y'all. We're here. Yeah. So with that, we will continue to push forward, and I thank God for just being able to serve First Mount Zion for six years. I'm trying to figure out where that went. Amen. I'm trying to figure out where that time has gone, uh, because it's a blur. It's been a blur, and I've been trying to sit down and remind myself of events and of things, amen, during these last six years. And um, it's so many that I can't encapsulate it all. And one of the things I've learned over the years is that um, it's hard to encapsulate all the things that God has done. You'll, you, what you'll find is that all of a sudden you just say, thank you, God, because all of it was good. Yeah. All of it was good. Yeah. So I thank God for being able to serve, amen, and continue to serve, amen, here at First Mount Zion, amen, as your pastor, and try to lead you toward the cross, to get closer to it, so that you know the power that is, that is granted therein. That's all that I have. Again, I'm looking at the announcements. Amen. With no glasses. Amen. That's not good. Amen. We, we, we're going to get through that. Just make sure I'm not missing anything that's pertinent. Amen. Um, I think I've hit all the pieces and parts. Oh, yes, the missionaries. Um, just Pat Edwards and Sabrina T. Will Smith. The Calvary uh, Church Senior Adult Luncheon. That's a grand opportunity. Amen. For First Mount Zion to get in front of many communities of faith, amen, that don't look like you, amen, could be Hispanic, could be white, could be whatever, amen, and be able to showcase first out time, amen, and be present, amen, in the midst of that particular lunch. It sounds like something great, amen, just from a fellowship perspective and definitely the same mindset of doing the missionary work of Jesus Christ. So keep that in mind. Also, um, the announcement for regards to deacons, trustees meeting after service, Please go to the conference room. It's probably the best place you all need to go. Go to the conference room after service. Uh, we want to have a small meeting, short meeting, around the service with deacons and trustees on today. Amen. That's all that I have. Amen. I'm going to turn the service back over. Just again, amen. She's doing an awesome job as our mistress to serve on. Amen. 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 
First by last time, amen, we will worship, amen, in the midst of giving God's offerings unto the Lord. For those who are watching us online, <clears throat> you can give, amen, via Givelify. Give my app on your phone, I just find First Without Zion, amen, and you'll find our logo, which you find the logo you found us, amen, you can give by way of your debit card on Givelify, as well as on our website, www.firstwithoutzion.com. You hit the donate button on the home page that will lead you to our PayPal app in order to give my way of your debit card that way. And also, amen, you can contact the church anytime, 704 332 8335. We can organize a time to come and pick up the tithes and offerings. If you're in the Charlotte Metro area, please just call us, let us know. No one's answering, just go ahead and leave a message. We'll get back with you and we'll go through the process of scheduling the time in order that you can give. Anytime you're on the corridor, West Boulevard, Remount Road. Stop by if you have your ties and offerings, just put them in an envelope, uh, seal it, and put it on the, in the drop box, secure lock drop box on the side door. Amen. Anytime any time uh, you can stop by the church and do that, whether it's someone, someone's here or not, you can give by way uh, of that drop box here on the campus. We ask that those who can stand, please stand at the side as we go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Most eternal all wise God, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this time of worship where we're able to give back a portion. What you've given to us in the form of tithes and offerings. Thank you, Father, for your giving. Because, Lord, nothing beats your giving. No matter how hard you try, God, you still give us, Lord, more than we could ever expect or imagine. And we thank you, Father, for your countless blessings. Let us be obedient to your word to give back a portion to your kingdom so there is meat in your house so that we can do the work of Jesus Christ our Lord in this place that we call First Mount Time. Bless us now and keep us God in every way. Bless those who give. Bless those who have a heart to give but might not have it at this time. Give provision where there's lack and allow your glory to supersede O God over any misfortune or any lack thereof and allow your presence Lord to carry us forward. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated in the presence of God as the trustees will serve you at this time. At this time, our hymn of both choir will give us a selection. Yeah. 
He seeks to lead them to Christ and to facilitate opportunities to develop meaningful relationships through faith and fellowship. Professionally, he has been employed in the financial services industry for over 20 years and is involved with various civic ministry and educational organizations. He and his lovely wife, Jennifer, are the proud parents of Troy, Joy and Troy Jr. and enjoy spending quality family time together. Now, when I was reading this, uh, by, uh, this Bible, I did not put two and two together. I had the pleasure of knowing his lovely wife, Jennifer, because she is a mama's troop leader. <laughs> and even during the pandemic, with them being, you know, going through the pandemic, they still, her and her co-leaders still have made time in different ways for these young girls to still enjoy being Girl Scouts. So she is a pleasure to know, so I want to say that. Amen. So after you hear the, uh, after the choir sings, the next voice you will hear will be that of Reverend Troy D. E. King. Amen.
grace first Mount Zion. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you this morning and first I want to say to God be the glory for the things he has done. It is an honor to share with you this morning. I always enjoy visiting and worshiping and sharing with you, but it, today is a special opportunity. As we gather to celebrate the sixth pastoral anniversary of your beloved Pastor Hagwood, my friend and my brother, thank you for the invitation. But thank you more so for what you are doing. I love you as a brother and as a friend as deeply as I could. We met on this journey in ministry. I just leaned over and said, where's the time going? <laughs> Those Saturday morning meetings and planning sessions and just simply all the work that we were putting in trying to be obedient to what God had called us to do. As young ministers coming up, finding our way. And only God knew the path that he would lay out for us that would lead us to this day and this moment where we get to celebrate six years of service the first night of time. Let's give God a hand by the first time. And I pray for many more as God has appointed that you will be strengthened that you will be covered that you too will be fed and nourished in a way that God sees fit for you and your wife, Taryn, and your three sons. For I know that this is a family journey. And sometimes we don't always get to see what happens behind closed doors when families are sharing and preparing for their service. But I pray that you will continue to be covered, that you will continue to be guided, and continue to be blessed abundantly and exceedingly by what God has in store for you. That is our prayer. Amen? Amen. 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 And I would be remiss if I didn't also thank my wife, Jennifer, for her continued support. Somebody said as best as it could possibly say that we are still here. Yes, yes, yes. And while we know that there are countless lives that have been lost and millions and millions have been impacted, yes. we are still here. Yes. yes. And we are still here by one reason and one reason alone, and that is God's saving grace. Yes. And so I thank him. I thank him for his grace and his mercy. I thank him for the work that he continues to do in me, the work that he continues to do in my wife and our family as we persevere. So we ask that you please keep us in your prayers. Keep us covered that we continue to be nourished and fed, blessed and kept along God's way. Amen. 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 Turn with me, if you will, to Paul's letter to the Galatians. <coughs> You are able to rest on your feet as we read God's word. I invite you to do so. Paul's letter to the Galatians. In chapter 6, we'll just lift up verses 6 through 10. Having already been read, we'd like to add this emphasis. Let the one who has taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. 
Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Yes. So then, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are the household of faith. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this space and place that you have created for us to gather around your word. God, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. For we have felt it, and we ask that you continue to have your way. Yes, God. Bless now these words as we share in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. And as you do so, and we begin to reflect on this text in the letter of Paul, I'd like to speak from the theme this morning, how to sow for a spiritual harvest. How to sow for a spiritual harvest. I took the time as I was studying and reflecting this week, just, there's a parallel here that we can't help but ignore to the experience of farming. And I don't know who may have grown up on or near a farm. Amen. Bless you. So you'll know what I'm talking about. Keep me honest, please. But in the process of farming, there's clearly an entire industry built around this. But it's not simply about commerce. It's about contribution. See, farmers plant crops under certain conditions expecting that the right ones will produce their desired harvest, but they cannot be sure of the outcome. A lot of things have to align in order for their desired crop to turn into harvest. Some of it comes down to what they can control and what happens around them. But there are no guarantees, so the best they can do is anticipate what might be and then prepare for certain conditions. But just because they can't guarantee an outcome, it doesn't mean they don't operate without a plan. And what does that mean, preacher? It means that if you were a farmer intending to harvest a certain crop, there are some things that you need to consider as you go about this process. First, you have to decide what kind of crop you want to grow. You have to make that decision. Is it corn? Is it wheat? And I dare look out. Some of y'all might be from the country. So you might be thinking something like cabbage, or greens, some cucumbers, some snap peas, some good old country squash. Whatever it is, those are all good choices. But you first must decide what type of crop you want to grow. Why is that question so important? Because you have to be intentional about the type of seed that you plant in order to produce the desired crop. Let me, let me make this a little clearer. You don't get squash by planting cucumber seeds. If you want sweet potatoes to grow, you don't plant tomato seeds. You have to be intentional about the crop that you want to produce to ensure that you plant the right seed. You with me? Be patient, we're going to get it. <laughs> For there can be no desired harvest without planting the right type of seed. And then once the land is prepared for the planting, comes the actual sowing 
of the seed. The land has been prepared, has been tilled and mowed and turned over and the soil has been cultivated. You've worked to create the right conditions for this seed to take hold. But that's where the real work actually starts. Once the seed is planted, it then needs to be tended to with the right nutrients, fertilizer, water, all the things that need to go into it to make it a conducive environment for this seed to grow. Water, fertilizer, then comes the maintenance. It must then be guarded against the things that may threaten its existence. Mm. Anybody here ever gone out just a garden? You, it, it could be a garden, it could be the plants you have on your front porch. Sometimes you know you gotta go and you gotta do a little weeding. Mm -hmm. yes. uh -huh. right? You gotta clean out the soil. You gotta clean out some of those weeds so that they don't grow and choke the plant that's trying to grow, right? Uh -huh. yes. So you, have, you may have to do a little weeding. You may have to sort of, you have to guard against some of the pests. Mm -hmm. yeah. that may come to eat what you're trying to grow. So you might put up a fence yeah. mm -hmm. to keep the deer from coming to eat <laughs> what you're trying to grow. Uh -huh. Right? So I like what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. But then there's another threat. There's, there's this thing called viruses that yeah. may attack our plants. And so sometimes you may have to get a little something to spray on them. Right? right? Yeah. All this is necessary to guard the conditions that you've created so that your seed uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then finally, if all goes according to plan, mm -hmm. you've done all that you're supposed to do mm -hmm. in the right manner, then and only then at the appointed time will the crop be ready for harvesting. Yes, yes. That's when you get to literally enjoy the fruits of your labor. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Decide on your crop. Uh -huh. Sow your seed. Mm -hmm. Put in the work. <laughs> and wait on your harvest. Uh -huh. <laughs> Decide on your crop. Yeah. What is it that you want to have? Yes. Sow your seed. Uh -huh. Put in the work. Uh -huh. yes. Wait at the appointed time. Yes. For your harvest. Yes. Right? yes. How to sow for a spiritual harvest. Uh, Paul tells us in this letter to the Galatians in this particular passage of what they need to be thinking about and talks about the lesson of sowing and reaping. And I just want to call something out and we're going to get to a couple points. I'm going to take my time, but we're not going to take much time. As Paul is talking about sowing and reaping, I want to call to your attention, whether you're older or younger, how many times you've heard somebody admonish someone or someone say, well, you're going to sow what you reap. Well, you'll reap what you sow. Uh, well, as I started to think about that, and as I was growing up as a little kid, I heard that a lot growing up in the church and growing up in the community. It was always my grandmother or the deacon or Sunday school teacher, somebody was catching us because we were probably doing something we weren't supposed to do. That's when it comes up. You don't tell somebody you're doing what they're supposed to do. We don't use it enough as encouragement. We use it as admonishment to remind them that there are consequences to our actions. Amen? You will reap what you sow. But I want to call you to focus on what Paul was saying when he shared this with Galatia, the church of Galatians. And I know it might be a little sensitive to some people, but it, it was already ushered in, in, in the announcements that Paul was actually talking about when he said, do all good things. He was encouraging the church to financially support those who were doing the work of ministry. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. He says it in, I didn't, Paul wrote it with his own pen. He said, let the one who has taught the word Share all good things with the one who teaches. 
all those good things it specifically he had in view was financial support. Now I know it might be a little touchy when we stand up in the, in the pulpit and we talk about the money, but God, Paul said, encourage them to share of their benefits, their blessings uh -huh. with those who had been appointed and set aside to do the work of the church mm -hmm. so that they would not be distracted Come on. by having to learn. Uh -huh. See. That's what he said. Uh -huh. Now, Paul didn't envision in that eye. We're going to speak truth. We're going to be honest today, right? Paul wasn't talking about private jets <laughs> and Rolls Royces. And I make no apology for that. Paul said, give of what you have to those who are teaching you so that they can focus on the work that is before them to continue to teach you. That's simple. But he also expanded it. All good things would simply include support for the pastor, the pastor's family, the ministry leaders, those who are doing the work to teach and edify others should be blessed by the blessings that you've been blessed with. It's simple. Again, we're not talking Leo Jets. We're talking about hospitality. We're talking about encouragement. We're talking about just pouring into them when they need support. To stand with them. To give them what they need to do what they've been called to do. You with me? Yes. All right, all right. So we got the touchy part out of the way. <laughs> But as we go through this, right, so let, let's, let's go back to the sowing. So here's the issue with the sowing and the reaping proposition is that many of us continue to make the mistake that we focus so much on the reaping that we ignore the sowing. We look ahead for what's to come, but we don't look into right here for what we should be doing. I can plant a seed and I start immediately thinking about, oh, I can't wait to put those tomatoes off that vine. I can't wait to go pull those, those cucumbers out of the ground. I can't wait to reap the harvest of the work. But if you start to focus so much on the harvest and you forget about the work that needs to be done, how it needs to be done, why it needs to be done. Uh, yes. That it instantly turns selfish. Yes, yes. Come on now. Come on now. Stay with me. We're going somewhere. There it is. So, so the mistake that many make is paying more attention to the reaping than the sowing. Listen. Paul wrote this. I didn't make it up. This is what Paul wrote with his own pen. But he sets in here a, 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 a what we call a hierarchy of expectations. In this passage. And this is what he says. It's the responsibility to meet the needs of Christian workers. Particularly those who commit their lives to instructing in the word. And while he does speak specifically about financial support. All good things could mean more than finances. But in a broader sense. It's contributing to the needs of the saints. And showing hospitality. For Romans 12, 13. It's. Sharing in spiritual blessings from Romans 15, 27. And it's having fellowship with one another from Philippians 4, 14. Those who benefit from the spiritual teaching provided to them should share their material blessings with those who have taught it to them. Why does that present a problem? Mm. One word. Stinginess. <laughs> Stinginess in our giving, whether it's financial or otherwise, as Paul tells us, is like mocking God. <laughs> he who has provided us with all that we have, he who has blessed us exceedingly and abundantly, he who causes our cups to overflow, should not have to suffer from our stinginess or withholding from him. Mm 
So Paul here lays out the principal equation that basically sums up our life as a whole. Those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly. Those who sow abundantly shall also reap abundantly. And it's pretty simple. You can't expect to do a little and get a lot. So as you give to the kingdom of God, so shall you receive from the kingdom of God. Not my words, Paul wrote. First lesson was pay more attention to the sowing than the reaping. What are you putting in? Not just the money. What work are you putting in? What service are you putting in? What hospitality are you extending? What encouragement are you sharing? What support are you providing for the work that's being done throughout the kingdom of God? What are you sowing? And what are you expecting from that work? The second point that Paul makes to us, it tells us what we should expect. He makes it clear. He said, those who sow to the Spirit shall reap eternal life. It's clear. But it gets a little deeper than that. In the practical matters, those who live for the sake of others and for the glory of God will receive an eternal reward. Right there, right there. Come on. Come on. But those who withhold from God and from others and live for themselves shall be denied such reward. Simple. But to make it clear, Paul draws a very, very important distinction. You don't want to miss this. Paul, Paul makes a very important distinction by noting that there are two different types of sowing. And there are two different types of reaping. There is sowing to the spirit, and there's sowing to the flesh. Make it play. Uh -huh. Each can only lead to its designated end. Well. So if you somehow get it twisted, overlap, messed up, wrong or backwards, you cannot sow to the flesh and reap eternal life. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But say it different. If you sow to the spirit, you know where that's going. Well, you won't sow to the spirit and end up with worldly repercussions. It can't happen. It cannot happen. The principle is clear. In the word, written by Paul's pen. It cannot lead to another end. It must only lead to its designated end. Sow to the flesh, reap from the flesh. Ah. But sow to the spirit. No, there's a prize for you waiting in glory. Ah. How do we mix that up? Stinginess. Mm. Selfishness. Yeah. Hmm. Greed. Yeah. How do we mix that up? Conceit. Mm. Vanity. Mm. How do we mix it up? Gossip. Mm. Yeah. Rumors. Come on. Oh, oh. How do we mix that up? Ah. Idolizing. Yeah. Worshiping the wrong things. Look out. Uh -huh. How do we mix that up? We think we know better than God. Oh. Yeah. How do we mix it up? Well, God, you don't wait on my plan. Because I'm going to sow what I want to over here right now. But I, I, I'll, I'll get with you when I'm ready. Look out now. Come on. I, 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 I'll, I'll come back to this when I'm ready. But for right now, I feel I feel pretty worldly. And I feel pretty fleshy. And so I'm focusing on me and my needs right now. I can't I can't wait on you and, and when it's going to happen and all. I know what the word is saying, but I can't wait. I need it right now. Get that eye out of there. I want it right now. This is what I have to have. There you go. You got it. Everything is around the eye. I, I, I need this. I want this. I know better. I'm going to do. 
So you choose your seed. You plant that seed. But very few people are willing to deal with what that seed produces. We've been warned. We've been educated. We've been informed on what happens when you sow to the flesh. It's clear. Then how do we still get it twisted? We pursue our own plan instead of God's plan. Paul told us. But it's great though, because he didn't focus or dwell on what happens if you don't. He led with and told us what the prize is. Mm -hmm. That we should keep our eyes on the prize. God's richness and glory. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past. Home at last. Ever. Ever. Yeah. To rejoice. Yes. It's clear to me. Is it clear to you? Yes. Yeah. Mm. But but here's a lesson though, and here's a reminder. However we choose to sow, we will receive what is due to us. However we choose to sow, mm -hmm. we will receive what is due to us. Go back, as you read the passage, I encourage you, look for definitive terms like will and shall. Mm -hmm. I didn't scan it, but I'm pretty certain that there's no might, maybe, possibly, mm -hmm. potentially, or any other qualifier in this passage. Mm -hmm. It said, what you sow, you shall reap. Mm -hmm. That is God's promise. I think back to being a young boy and growing up and spending time in my grandparents' house who had a garden in their backyard. And for my brother and I, who's a few years younger, we didn't really understand it, and we, now we do when we get the times that we made grandpa mad by running through his garden, the ball, the bike, whatever it was. We didn't have that appreciation back then, but I understand that. And now I've been able to reflect on those times when I looked out and we were out in the backyard and I saw my grandfather bent over shoveling. Or I saw him down on his knees working with his hands, moving dirt and digging. I even remember the times when I actually saw him planting. I said, hey, Papa, what are, what are we planting? And this time we're planting cabbage. And then up on the hill, we had another area where he planted and we planted some greens and some cucumbers and some things like that up there. I didn't appreciate as a young boy the work that my grandfather had to put in. But I remember the times when he finally got to realize the harvest and would bring in the baskets of, of vegetables and my grandmother would wash them and cook them and talk about how great it was to have fresh vegetables and fresh fruits that we were cooking for dinner. All right, I only paid attention to the harvest, but I didn't see the sowing. Mm -hmm. And here's just a lesson to you about seeing the sowing. Nobody needs to necessarily see your sowing. My grandfather didn't get on his knees and tend to a garden because somebody was watching. He, he put in the work because that's what he knew it took. And there I say, he, he also knew that, hey, if I do this right, if I put in the work, there may be some responsibility on me to provide for my family. And so I've got to put in the work to make sure that there is something to realize in that harvest that I can feed my family. But it was not done for an audience. Yes. Uh, yes. He did it regardless, whether I was in the backyard or not. Whether my grandmother looked out the window to check on him on one of those hot summer days, he did the work Listen. Mm. to produce the desired outcome. Yes. 
Yes. Watch this. We talked about the household of faith, right? The community, those who are around us. I also distinctly remember that there was always ample. There were more tomatoes or maters. There were more tomatoes than my grandmother could can. And so I remember her putting them in a bag and saying, take this across the street to Miss Bennett's. Yeah. Yeah. I remember her taking and putting them in the basket and saying, walk these down to Miss Susie Irvin. Yeah. Yeah. Walk these up the street to Miss Lister. Uh -huh. Walk these down to Miss B. Adams. Why do I remember those names? Because they were part of our community. Yeah. And the community looked after one another. So if you had, they had, if they had, we had. Whatever list that might be. Yeah. Listen. It didn't say some. 
Well, it didn't say a few. It didn't say many. Mm. It said everyone. Yes. So that everyone can benefit, especially to those yes. who are in the house of faith. And they're closing them. But as we think about it, we should not lose heart in our service to the kingdom of God. Yes. The crop may not be growing as quickly as you think it should. The crop may not be growing in the way you, all, you think it ought to be. But if your crop is growing okay. and you continue to sow, we have been promised that there's a harvest to come. And this extends beyond tomatoes and sweet potatoes. But there's a spiritual harvest Hallelujah. that we will reap. Thank you, Lord. For our souls in eternity, for our salvation, for a chance to walk those streets of glory. Yes. If we sow to the Spirit, the encouragement that Paul leaves us with is don't grow weary in doing good. Don't grow faint in doing God's work. Whatever place you've been called to and whatever station you've been called to serve, don't grow weary. It's not about what you see. It's about what you do. That blessing may not be for you to realize, but you got to keep doing the work. I had a fantastic conversation with my son a couple weeks ago. And as a father, I don't know if I had expected to hear it then or if I had ever expected it, but he said to me, he said, Dad, thanks for the work that you and mom have been doing for me and Joy. Mm -hmm. He said, you may not realize it, but it's working. All right. We appreciate the lessons that you taught us. Yes. And even though at times we may seem ungrateful, or we don't say thank you, or we're not at being as thoughtful as you want, we're learning and we're growing. But thank you. And to hear those words come from my son in an introspect made me think about this, and this is how I respond. I say, son, thank you for sharing that with me. I needed to hear that as your father. I never thought for once that the work that your mom and I were doing was in vain. That's what we're supposed to do as parents. But let me share something with you. There's no playbook or checklist as a parent. Amen. You just rise and sit every day trying to do the work, trying to do the best that we can. There will never be a point where there's nothing that we, nothing left to teach you. There will never be a day until we breathe our last breath that we won't stop pouring into you and your sister to help you be the very best that God has designed you to be. But here's the thing. I was like, here's what we rest on. And I realized I'll, I'll come to a close with this. I told him, I can live to 90 years old or I could be gone tomorrow. That's right. Either way, I know that there are things that we are preparing you for that I won't see. There are things that you are prepared for that you don't even know are coming yet. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But oh my God, when we talk about that harvest, my harvest, Jennifer and I's harvest is not just the life of our two children. It's the harvest of their children's children and their children's children's children and the blessings that God will be seeing. You got to put in the work. Because the work needs to be done. Not for recognition. I appreciate it when you said to me. But guess what? We went right back to work. And talked about another lesson. I'm not worried about reaping the harvest. But putting in the work so that they can. And that their children can. And their children's children can. That's the harvest, the spiritual harvest that we're talking about. What are we passing along? So the work that we're doing, who is it serving? Who is it benefiting? 
It shouldn't just be us. It should be our children. It should be our community. It should be all those who we can place under the sound of our voices in the reach, within the reach of our hands for the work that we're doing. Do not grow weary. I know at times it'll be discouraging. I know at times it'll be disappointing. I know at times you may grow disillusioned with what you're doing. Do not grow weary. Do not grow faint. Do not give up. Because your spiritual harvest depends on it. If that farmer had not watered the crop, if that farmer had not put down the fertilizer, if that farmer had not done all they were supposed to do, there should be no expectation for a harvest. And as there will be discouragements along the way, do not lose courage or grow weak in the face of trial or difficulty. We take courage and comfort in the assurance that God will vindicate his people. And at the appointed time, as Paul said, in due season, at the appointed time, not our time, not our calendar, but at the appointed time, we will stay in the reap the fullness of God's own goodness. And at every opportunity, we must seek to do what's good on every occasion and every season to be benevolent to our brothers and sisters, to be helpful, to provide, to support, to encourage, to do all that we can to meet the needs of the Christian community, the pastor and his family, those who lead in ministry, those who work and serve in ministry, and those on the outside who are served by the ministry. Spiritually, so for what's to come, don't focus on the reaping. That's not the point. You might not be the one to see the harvest. Might not be for you, but for your faith and your obedience. Through faith, and through obedience. Keep sowing. Keep planting. Keep investing for that spiritual harvest. For God's word is faithful and it is true that in its appointed time it will come to you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
body will continue to sow into you. So if there's one that does not do but is willing to accept, I might be. Amen. Yeah. 